Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion, guys. And today we got another new product for the VR30, Q50, Q60, and Nissan Z. First thing, shout out to AMS Performance for bringing out their air to water intercoolers. So you already know what to do. Let's Welcome go. everybody back to Boost in Motion, guys. And good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. So welcome everybody back. Welcome everybody back to the channel. First thing to my Boost Motion family, please, I really would appreciate it because I already know you guys already hit the like button. So thank you and I really appreciate you guys. And if you're new to the Boost Motion channel, I am Boost Motion. I do talk about some Infinity Nissan content, but I do talk about all other automotive news and updates. And, you know, pretty much we talk about our car shit over here. Outside of that, guys, let's go. Let's talk about it. Let's get into this video. So first thing, shout out to AMS Performance. They recently released their upgraded air to water intercoolers for the Q50, Q60, and Nissan Z. Of course, a lot of these companies were waiting for the Nissan Z to come out to you know, really drop those products. But I do want to do an honorable mention here because people do bang with your boy Boost because I do bring you guys some updates and things that I see in the platform. AMS Performance is not the first company to have air upgraded air to water intercoolers. First thing, shout out to RGM. Shout out to um, Drop Bear LLC. These companies were some of the first companies to come out with their um, upgraded air to water intercoolers. And I just want to quickly show you guys a slight picture, nothing crazy, but I just want you guys to take a look. This was the original air to water intercoolers, some of the first people to the market. But you know, when you're not a big name in a big company, you're not going to get a huge amount of representation. But because I definitely do uh, always try my best to um show the smaller companies and where these companies have started and where they are now i'm just showing you guys that there's always a choice it's a free market here um also shot shout out i showed rgm but also at some point rgm turned into drop bear llc which i also do want to show you guys right now so that you guys can take a look and this is this is the drop bear llc's version of upgraded air to water intercooler it's triple pass it also have a larger capacity and on top of that, it's made by a smaller company. So if you want to support these smaller companies, definitely go tap in with Drop Air LLC on their Facebook. And I believe they also have an email. All right. Anyways, let's go. Let's jump into the AMS performance. I know some of you guys are like, Boost, why'd you even throw that in? We're talking about AMS performance. Well, I'm going to always give you guys a comparison. And I'm just trying to be fair, man. It's capitalism. I get it. But I'd rather give you guys choices and options. All right. Let's get back into it. Let's talk about these AMS air to water intercoolers and if I really do like them. And what I want to tell you guys is I actually do. I definitely do like AMS performance and I love what they're doing with the community. They always do what they need to get done and they take their time to make sure that they get something and they get something right. Uh, Quickly, I'm not going to go through a bunch of information because it's already on their website. But I do want to give you a couple of things from reading through some of the information they put on their website. Just some cl short cliff notes, right? Uh, their cl short cliff notes are this. They have the largest and most efficient air intercoolers on the market. I, I probably do believe them because there's only other two other competitors, uh, other companies, Drop Bear LLC and Mishimoto. Um, they have a 40 degree recorded drop in intake air uh, temperature over OEM. Now, for anybody who wants to know what that means, we pretty much call that charger temp or pretty much post temperature of the boost and or compressed air that goes into your motors after the air to water intercoolers. So it is a 40% drop. For some of the guys who are watching, boost, do I even care about this? Are the OEM ones efficient? We'll get to that part. Give me some more time. This car, this is also one of the, most, the fastest Q50s pretty much on earth. Shout out to... Um, a daily Q50. These were used on his car with his upgraded Garrett turbos. There's also a 70%, 70.4 increase of core size over OEM. And they talk about other different um, specifications. They do have larger inlets. They also do have larger outlets of the air to water, um, air to water intercooler, usually, which will increase the amount of flow. Or and or and reduce the restriction in the intake system, which means the, the car actually runs more efficient. 
if you know what I mean. Um, and drastically increases the coolant flow up to 33% larger water ports and lines. So they do enlarge the coolant that circulates through the uh, in the cool itself. So it actually allows more coolant to flow through the system and increase flow. So that's some of the small cliff notes. But there's a couple other things that they spoke about on their website is the location of the map sensor. Pretty much from the when they did a couple of tests on the OEM or the order intercoolers, the map sensor placement isn't like directly in stream of the air charge, right? So there would usually be a delay of what the specific charge attempts or temperatures of this boost would actually be, which these variances could mess up the tuning process. And once again, the car will be reliable but and run right, but you want to be able to always be on top of any change in temperature when it comes to air charge. Because if it changes, if it's a lagging indicator, then when it comes to tuning, there could be a point where the car goes more on the lean side. And before the map sensor could actually pick up those temperature differences, you know, a, a big kaboom could happen. I'm just saying I'm not a tuner, but I'm just using it theoretically, right? So they chose to put the the map sensor in stream of the actual charge air, uh, the charge air, so we can get the most accurate sensor readings completely. So I think that's a really smart idea. They're the engineers. They're the guys who do the R&D. I believe them. And if it works, it works. All right. Two, I really like how the unit looks, man. This looks freaking great, like, to be honest with you. Um, they also talk about the coolant flow. It, it does from what it looks like. It looks like a single pass unit. Now they're uh, one of their competitors is a triple pass unit, which usually gives you about three. Um, triple pass means you, it can cool the air three times in the same unit. And usually that will make it a little bit more efficient, but we'll have to wait till down the line where maybe two cars can have one can have drop air, another one will have AMS. We'll see. We just have to wait and see. Cool. Um, once again, I really like that they really do this unit. They use a comparison of the OEM size. You have some 3D grams to see how much bigger the unit is and the core size, how much or larger it is. Once again, a lot of this stuff is on their website, and you could just quickly take a look at it. Right here, they talk about the map sensor's location and where they put it so that it can actually have better readings and how quick, how much more how much of the variance of air temperature drops off depending on, compared to the AMS unit versus the OEM units. And you can even see here that the stock air, stock um, air intercooler, air to water intercooler is about 18 degrees off compared to AMS version. So you can look more into this. Uh, and it just talks about what you can use it with. All right. So now you guys are going to say, well, Boost, can you give me your honest opinion on what you think about the unit? Is this a unit I should use on my stock Q50? Um, should I use this? There's also a couple of things that they have said here. OK. Oh, use, should I use this on my stock Q50? Should I use them upgraded uh, turbo? What should I do? I really bang with you, Boost. You've been in this community for a while. You know a lot of people. What do you honestly think? And plus, we know that, you know, no one's paying you. To, you know, paying you to just stick with one company and ride with them. You know what? You're right. You're definitely right. So my honest opinion, and I've said it before in my older videos, and I'm going to say it again on video for anyone's watching, right? Shout out to AMS. Once again, I think they're a great company. They have some great workers, and they're all cool people, so I have no problem with them. Um, what I would say is this. Some of the most fastest... Um, some of the most fastest Q50s, Q60s were still on the stock air to water in the coolers, right? And yes, you may get a more cooling capacity and a better thermal resistance, as it would say, better flow with going with upgraded air to water in the cooler. But I don't think this is something that the average day person necessarily should get. Uh, AMS was one of the first people to make um, upgraded heat exchangers for this comp uh, for this for this platform, and we saw through the last four, five, six years of this car being out that the more cooling you add to this system, the better. This is this is less. Pre this prevents less heat soaking on multiple runs and quicker recovery time. So AMS have made a plenty of products to always find a way to make everything better through time through through all the different products they offer. But for an OEM Q50, most of you guys are going to do downpipes, cat back exhaust, maybe intakes, and a heat exchanger system. And necessarily, that's all you really need. 
these modifications are really for the really died hard guys who really want to squeeze out the most amount of performance, the most amount of consistency out of their car, because this is what they do. They just want to have those products, and that's just what it is. Once again, whatever products you choose is up to you. You like the brand, you like the brand, you don't, you don't. I don't really care tell you guys what to go left or right. I just like to, to show you guys the options and you choose from them. So knowing that the price point of this heat exchange, uh, it, it's pretty much still a heat exchanger, but it's air to water intercooler, which is technically a heat exchanger. For anyone who wants to watch, want to make fun of me. <laughs> Let me go quickly back up. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, the price of this unit is twenty three hundred dollars that is a quite a penny to actually spend for an air to water and a cooler i understand a lot of r d went into it and everything but twenty three hundred dollars is quite expensive money to spend that you're not necessarily you're regaining performance and you're gaining consistency in the performance that you from your car but do you really want to spend twenty three hundred dollars on be fair if anyone's watching on a car is making 450 wheels power it's not like it's making neck breaking power i would see someone who maybe might have done like a pure turbo they were on the 85 and they do street runs um they do uh they go to the racetrack they do this type of they're in the type of motorsports where they need this then i can see them having this option but once again we've had another company out drop llc and even mishimoto which recently came to the platform uh within this year that also came out with their units and everyone's not jumping on them. It's nice that there's another option out there and people will jump on them. But for majority of people, you're really choosing not to do this. And I understand. It's quite expensive price point. So that's my recommendation, everyone. Shout out to AMS for making a great product. I think that if you are going to be max effort in this platform, I think you think you should definitely consider this product. But there's also two other products, Mishimoto, which is about, I believe, $1,500, I believe, out there. Um, and uh, you also have uh, drop bear LLC units, which I believe are about seventeen to eighteen hundred dollars. So they do undercut AMS, but they are a little bit more expensive than Mijimoto. So matter no matter whatever you do, take your time, go look out, uh, go out there and look for these specific units and see if they apply to your apply to your application. And I'm gonna just leave it there. At the end of the day, if I was gonna go get another Q50 Q60. And I wanted to maximize performance. I'm going to say it right now because most of you guys don't make it to the end. I would just actually just skip this unit completely. It's it's quite an expensive piece to choose to do. I would either look into an air-to-air -air kit, which seems like there's definitely a, an increase of power. You don't have to deal with heat soaking because at the end of the day, you can do all of this one and add more cooling and have a larger it would in the coolers, but it's still going to heat soak at some point time. You're going to have recovery, but if you're in 90, 100 degree weather and you're doing pulls back to back, what you expect the car to do? It's going to eventually heat soak because of the air to water, uh, air to water system. But the air to air system is a lot more consistency, even though it may have some variance between cold, boost weather, and hot air. It at least has a bit more consistency, and there's an increase in power. That's all I'm sitting there saying on video. And or if you want to, you if you just really care about cooling cooling capacity you can just add a into a heat a upgraded heat exchanger right and add a fender tank which ams and z1 motorsports sell where you can add about 1.6 1.7 gallons of coolant to the system this is going to probably give you just as much um coolant i'm just saying theoretically this is my hypothesis it will still add all that thermal coolant uh, thermal resistance to the system so that you have enough coolant so you'll you can always recover and I think that would be the better route to go. And even on top of that, you can run a dual pass or with some a dual pass or a uh, circuit, uh, it'll um, a heat exchanger where you have like a uh, AMS heat exchanger and like a burger tuning heat exchanger too, or, o or or OEM and a burger tuning. This systems work quite well. I have a video talking about that with race box that you could check out hopefully i put the link up above and you could take a look at that and he even talked about from a tuner perspective there's other options to do out there that you can add in honestly a fender tank is 400 a heat exchanger you can you know the larger ones are about 500 dollars, and you can still keep the oem or you could go to burger tuners like 400 and you could do all of this and still stay on the stock air to water intercoolers and some of the fastest most powerful q50s um, out there, we're done all on stock air to water intercoolers. If they can do it, 
I think your 450 wheel horsepower Q50 Q60 and Nissan Z can do perfectly fine on stock uh, stock air water and coolers. All right. So outside of that, guys, we have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thank you for banging with your boy Boost. Hopefully, I gave you guys some informative information. I really hope that I continue to help this platform um, and just give you guys that information because I really enjoy and love my Nissan Infinities. Even though I do bang with my Mercedes gang and other cars that I love to own at some point. But outside of that, guys, you already know what to do. Add me at Boost Emotion IG, Facebook, and Boost Emotion at Gmail.com. Otherwise, than that, guys, I appreciate you. You guys have a good day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost Emotion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my 